So a physical change alters the, the state or the appearance of matter, but doesn't change its composition. So here we have a pot of boiling water. And if we could zoom in, we'd see these little Mickey Mouse head water molecules. Um, two white atoms and a red atom, and all of the particles are the same. When we boil the water and it goes into the gas state, the individual particles are the same. The particles themselves have not changed. What's changed is their interactions with each other. They're much farther apart now. They're moving faster. It's become a gas instead of a liquid, but the particles are the same. It's like what happens with students when class is over and you guys go out the door. Does your hair color change? No. Do you suddenly get taller or skinnier or something? No. Your body, your person, stays the same. And you go out there and you're just the same person. So that's a physical change. Now you are not next to the same people that you were next to in class, but you have not been changed. That's a physical change. The individual particles do not change. Those particles could be atoms, they could be molecules, but they're just gonna stay the same. Um, yeah, everything on that slide. If we have a chemical change, now the particles are changing. So an example of this is an iron nail that is rusting. So here's what the iron looks like in the brand new, nice shiny nail. We have iron atoms and they are arranged in a particular way. They're bonded together. It's strong and you can use it to hold things together, right? When this undergoes a chemical change called rusting or corrosion, the iron atoms now combine with oxygen. And so we have oxygen and iron together, and they form a new compound. And this compound has different characteristics. It's a different color, and it has a different quality to it. You can't make nails out of rust, right? You could maybe, you know, kind of put some rust powdery stuff together and make it look like a nail, but you couldn't pick it up and hammer it into a fence because it just falls apart. It has different characteristics. The particles have changed. So that's a chemical change. Any questions? Other examples? Here we've got dry ice. This is a, a piece of dry ice being held in an iron ring. You know why they call it dry ice? Because it doesn't melt. Regular ice, I guess, would be wet ice, right? I went up to the mountains and we took some sandwiches in the cooler, right? And somebody didn't eat one of theirs. And then later we get home and the sandwich is floating in the water, right? And it's all wet and soggy and nasty because we used regular wet ice. If you use dry ice, that doesn't happen because dry ice doesn't melt. So dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. So each carbon dioxide molecule is, is one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And here they are all stuck together as a solid. And it doesn't melt, it goes directly into the gas state. The particles are the same, but they're separated from each other. So it's gaseous carbon dioxide. That's a physical change. State changes between solid, liquid, liquid, gas, gas, solid, any combination of those, those are always physical changes because all that's changing is how the particles are associated with each other. The individual particles are the same. Another example of a physical change, sugar dissolving. So here we have the sugar crystals and the sugar molecules are all arranged next to each other. They're stuck together. When we put this into water and stir, the sugar molecules remain the same, but they separate from each other and they become mixed with the water. So we have a physical change here. The sugar is now mixed with the water. We've made a solution, but the particles themselves haven't changed. So dissolving something in water is a physical change. Here's a chemical change, burning propane. So here are propane molecules. They're present in this compressed or liquid propane fuel canister. And as they escape 
out here, we lit a match and got a fire started and they're burning. These particles are changing. They're combining with oxygen and now they're forming carbon dioxide and water molecules. The particles are not the same as they were before. This is a chemical change. Everybody okay with that? We can also talk about chemical and physical properties. And these are somewhat related to the chemical and physical changes. A physical property is something that you can demonstrate, observe, that a substance displays without changing its composition. So the smell of gasoline. If you take a whiff of gasoline, you're like, oh, yep, that's gasoline. Does that change the composition of the gasoline? No, it's still gasoline. If you observe the color of something, if you measure its density, its melting point, its boiling point, its length, take a piece of wood and measure its length. Does that change the wood? Nope, it's still wood. You can even cut it in half and measure it again. Now you did a physical change to it. You can measure that physical property. A chemical property is one that a substance displays only by changing its composition. In order to demonstrate a chemical property, the substance undergoes a chemical change. So a chemical property of gasoline is that it is flammable. If you demonstrate that or observe gasoline burning, in that process, the gasoline is destroyed and new things are made. The composition changes. So it's a chemical change. Corrosiveness, acidity, Toxicity, those are all examples of chemical properties. So here we have a for practice problem. So there's an example, 1.1 in your textbook, and they, they show you the solution to that one. And then this one they give you for practice. And so I choose to use these as examples in lecture. Determine whether each change is physical or chemical and what kind of property is demonstrated in each case. So a copper wire is hammered flat. Is it still copper? Yes. Yes. So is that a chemical change or a physical change? Physical. That's a physical change. I'm going to call that PC for physical change. That property is a common property of metals that you can hammer them into a sheet. When you hit metal, it dents. It doesn't shatter, right? You think you big anvil, and you go bang, 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 and you can flatten it. That's called malleability. What do you think? Is that a physical property or a chemical property? When I demonstrate the malleability of copper, do I change the copper? No. Nope, it's still copper. Its shape has changed, but the individual component particles are the same. So that's a physical property. I'll call that PP. So a nickel dissolves in acid to form a blue-green solution. What do you think? Chemical or physical change? Both? So th this one is a little harder to figure out because I just told you that when you dissolve sugar in water, that's a physical change. When you dissolve sugar in water, is there a color change involved? No. Here we've got a nickel dissolving in acid, forming a blue-green solution. What's your experience with nickels, coins in general? Do they dissolve in water? No, thank goodness, right? So this dissolving in acid, is that something that seems like a normal thing for a nickel to do? Well, that's kind of unusual, right? Um, this would be a not so great test question because I would expect some of you to really struggle with this. You could argue back and forth and with a limited knowledge of chemistry, you'd have a hard time answering this. This is a chemical change. What happens is that nickels are actually made out of nickel um, and the nickel atoms become nickel ions when they react with the acid and nickel ions are soluble in water and they give a blue-green color to the solution. So this is a chemical change. And if this is a chemical change, 
The property of nickel that it dissolves in acid to form a blue-green solution, is that a chemical property or physical property? It's a chemical property. Okay, this one's easier. Dry ice sublimes without melting. Chemical or physical prop change? Physical. Because this was one of the examples. So this is a physical change. It's going from a solid to a gas. But the particles are the same. Is that the fact that dry ice sublimes without melting, is that a physical property or a chemical property? When I demonstrate that, do I change the particles? No. So that makes it a physical property. A match ignites when struck on a flint. That's going to be a chemical change. After you light the match and you watch it burn, and you're like, oh, I don't want to burn my fingers. We'll snuff it out there. Could I do that again? Or has the match been changed? The match has been very changed. Anything that involves burning, combustion, is going to be a chemical change. So a match ignites when you strike it on a flint. Is that a chemical property or a physical property? It's a chemical property. Look, there's a pattern here. Chemical properties, I'm sorry, physical properties and physical changes go together. Chemical changes and chemical properties go together. Any questions? Here's another one, more conceptual. So the diagram on the left, that's this one over here, represents liquid water molecules in a pan. Which of the three diagrams, A, B, or C, best represents the water molecules after they've been vaporized by boiling? So when you boil water, does that change the particles? No. So if we look at B and C, these particles are not the same as the water here. But in panel A, those are the same shapes, right? Same number of red and, and white spheres stuck together. So the answer would be A. Because when you boil the water, when you vaporize the water, the particles separate from each other, but they stay the same. This would be an example of a chemical change and you could do that by putting a 9-volt battery in a cup of tap water. You can try that if you want at home. It's not super exciting, but you know, if you're having a slow day. Um, and you'll see some fizzing happening, some bubbles forming at the two terminals of the battery. And that's the electricity decomposing the water, separating these water molecules, and they're going to form oxygen molecules and hydrogen molecules instead.